All right, we're back. We are Comp 1073. That's uh, client side scripting in the winter 2017 semester. And we are week 12, part three of our broadcast here at Georgian. And it's intro to CreateJS with TypeScript, right? Part two, right? That's what it is. We just finished up uh, last video. We uh, finished setting up our, our project. And up online, we have a, um, a repository that we're using. So it's again under Georgian College forward slash comp 1073 W2017 lesson 12. Please download this one. Okay. See if we're going to move from here. So let's assume that you've done it already. You've downloaded it and we're moving on, right? What do we do? Well, we've got some positive response. So inside, we're going to leave this alone for now. Okay. And we're going to go inside of our core, inside of our app.ts. And this is our structure right now. But we're going to set up our CreateJS. Now remember, for this, we need a couple things. I need to have access to my stage. I need to have access to my canvas, right? My canvas itself is an HTML element, yeah? So I need to get access to it like we normally do with get element by ID, right? So again, before my start at the top here inside of my iffy, I'm going to do let, and we're going to start uh, you know, calling canvas. We're going to make it a an HTML canvas, right? HTML canvas element. Actually, HTML element is probably the right thing to do. Here we go. HTML element. Come on. Woo. It's just not happening today. My typing is atrocious. Elements. There we go. That's what it is. I'm defining my canvas. All right, as any HTML element. Now, typically what I want to do is in my start function, I want to initialize, right? But I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to actually initialize it up here. I'm going to say is equal to, right, document uh, get element by ID, get element by ID. Oh, yeah, I'm really being challenged today. And then it's Canvas, right? There it is. So that's that's a reference to the canvas element on the page. First thing, right? And then I'm going to let my stage, and this is where you test to see if CreateJS works, right? Which is going to be of type createjs.stage. That's what it is, right? That's equal to. Um, that's what what I'm going to be, uh, you know, creating createjs.stage. This uh, this element here. So stage and canvas. Yeah. Now inside of my my function, inside of my start function, right? I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say, give me some space. I'm going to say, stage is going to be equal to new create js. Oh, dot stage capital S. Right, this one. Right? And it takes one element, which is the canvas element. So this, what this does is it creates a new stage container. I want to call this the parent container, parent container for our app. Right? That's what this is. Stage. By the way, if I wrote this up here. Down here, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't hurt. So let's say, for example, if I did this instead of doing up this, and if I kind of cut this out, and I did something like this too, right? So canvas is equal to bam. That's fine too. Got the double equals. And this, what this does is it gets a, gets a reference hook <laughs> into the Canvas element. So it does. So I get I get a hook in my canvas element, and then I I make a reference so that I pass it into my stage as a parameter. So now stage the container known as stage, which is the display list container. Think about the state the, the stage itself as the display list, a big list, an array of objects. And every time I add something to the stage. Right? I'm just adding to the container. That's all I'm doing. Big array. Okay, cool. Next. 
I want to use my create.js dot ticker, right? It's a it's a um, the ticker class is a um, static class, right? And what I want to do is dot frame rate, right, is equal to sixty. What I'm really saying there is, I want to set my frame rate, set frame rate to 60 frames per second. That's what, this, that's what this is. You can change this frame rate to whatever you want. Here's what's not good. Never, ever change your frame rate in the middle of your game or application or whatever you're writing. You don't have to do that to slow things down or speed things up. You can do it other ways, right? Like, for example, some people use a, make a game with CreateJS, and then they want to make it more difficult, so they speed it up. That's incorrect, right? And also, may not work, depending on the device, right? For my device, it might be OK. But for your device, maybe you, have a, you don't have the same laptop as me, and maybe you can't sustain 60 frames per second, so it won't run. All right, so this is my frame rate, 60 frames per second. Cool, next. Now that I got my frame rate, I want to um, set up my event, right? So create.js dot ticker dot on, right? And then remember the on is like, it comes from our event listener. It's like add event listener. And we're looking for a tick event, OK? Notice that what I'm looking for, the first is the type of event, which is the tick event, right? And every tick, you know what a tick is? Is a frame. Every frame, right, I want it to do something. I'm listening for every frame to elapse, right? It's going to count frames, one every 16 milliseconds. Every time that I have a frame that goes on over and over again, like a clock, it's going to be the ticking clock for me, right? And what I want to do is I want to refer to update. I want to say, hey, every frame, call the update method. Hey, we have it right here. The update method, I want you to think about this as, the main app loop, or in this case, might, we might, might also call it the game loop, if you will. Right? This main loop, what it does is every time we do, every time, every frame, this, this refreshes, right? This gets called, right? It's called every frame, right? So that, that is equal to uh, every approximately, let's say, approximately every 16 milliseconds, right? This function is going to be called very frequently, right? Every 16 milliseconds. That's 60 times every second, right? Approximately. And then what we want to do is we want to say stage.update, lowercase u. OK, what am I doing that? My update refreshes or redraw Redraw the stage. So I'm actually redrawing the stage every 16 milliseconds. I'm actually just redrawing it over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, right? So that way, anything, anytime I move something on the stage, it gets moved and then redrawn, moved and redrawn, moved and redrawn. So I actually erase and redraw is what I'm really doing. Or another way to say that is refresh. I refresh the, the, the page all the, all the time, right? Now, this is only happening for my stage. Where does my stage live? Inside my canvas element, right? Inside here. This is where my stage is, right in here. Yes. Sure. Well, it isn't, right? My oh, you mean this part? Yeah. That's lowercase u. That is part of a method of the stage. Update uppercase u is our update for my for my application. Stage update, lowercase u, belongs to the stage object. And if you actually oh. hover over it, you can see that it does. See? It says create.js stage.update. That is a method that belongs to, this, to, the, uh, to the stage. By the way, for, app, for um, documentation, if you're ever curious, if you click on create.js docs, and if you go to uh, easel.js, right? And if I click on docs, and if I want to see them, I can see what my stage is. If I can go back to my stage, here's my stage. It explains what a stage is. And it talks about exactly what I'm doing here. All right? It gives me the exact you know, code that I'm using, pretty much. Yes? Um, so the create.js object, is that like part of each of those libraries? 
CreateJS is the entire suite, right? So it's the namespace. Think about it as the overall global name for all of my uh, my uh, my libraries. I'm not calling EaselJS. I'm using EaselJS here, right? But I'm using CreateJS as the overall library. And inside that library, there is a there is a, a class called Stage, the Stage class, right? And this I'm calling the Stage class and a member of that Stage class or a method of the Stage class, right? If you look at methods. And we're going to go down to update, right? So here's clear, clone, contain. These are all the methods that are part of the stage class. So it's well well documented. That's why I like it for learner for learning uh, JavaScript, right? If I scroll all the way down here, right, till I go to update, it's because you were asking Alex about update. There's tick update. There it is. Each time the update method is called, the stage will call tick. Unless tick up tick on update is set to false and then render the display list to the canvas each time It's going to re-render or redraw everything to the canvas, right? That's what it does with the update method okay, Yes The what? Yeah, that's what the theory you're getting okay Let's go back. We'll we'll do that in a second. Make sure you have this is using my code, right? Okay. And did you you have to do npm install? That's what I want you to do. I want you to npm install um, because remember node modules is where all the type definitions are. You don't have this because I didn't include it in my GitHub. So go to go to your terminal and put npm space install, and then close down that uh, that uh, window and open it up again. Okay, you should have that. All right, so that's what this does. So I'm calling the stage, right? Every frame. So so far, okay. So these are the things that I'm doing. Okay, uh, how do I test this out? Well, if everything passes, if I press save, right, and I, you know, remember, whenever I save, I transpile, right, automatically, right. But you can see that nothing's happened. It hasn't transpiled yet, has it? Right, has it? Not really. Right, so if I transpile, so command shift B, right? And if I go back to to my JavaScript, you can see now that my JavaScript is transpiled and, and put everything in place that I want. Okay? Cool. Now that it's transpiled, I'm gonna go back to my application. Now it doesn't show anything right now, but I should see still if I go to inspect and if I go to console, I should see no problem but let's take a look and see what it says browser sync am i actually loading this thing and i haven't done that light server i stopped serving that's over here let's close this off and do that again i meant this no no errors that's what you should see if you see any errors here right that would be a problem so if i go back to my elements and if i want to see what my all my elements are or my sources here's my sources right just open this up so you can see it. Take a look at this, right? To prove that it's working in my scripts, in my core, in my app.js, you should see everything I just typed in JavaScript right here, right? It's been transpiled. If you don't see that, something has gone wrong. You didn't transpile properly. All right. Yes? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. I didn't get that. All right, so really cool. Now, that's part one. So part one is we just set up our, our, our CreateJS application, right? So here in the start function, I want you to, to think about this. And I want to do this funky uh, documentation for this time around, OK? So I'm, I'm introducing something new today, right? So I'm going to say forward slash star star, right? And what I want to say is at, okay, um, at method. Right, start. Okay. And we're going to do it in here at returns, right? Void. Because with TypeScript, right? And by the way, I can put a little, little uh, kind of comment in here that says this method initializes uh, the uh, CreateJS uh, stage object. And starts the um, game loop. That's what it does. Notice the, the commenting here that I'm doing. It's 
backslash double star and then a bunch of stars here. This is uh, like Javadoc. If you ever done Javadocs, this is like that, right? Um, but UI, UE doc is what I'm really following. Okay, I'm going to talk about UE doc right now. So if I look at UE doc, it's up, up, up online. Something new. I can always give you something new, right? Come on, UE doc. And if you look at UE doc, here it is. I'm going to take this thing for a second. I'm going to copy it and put it into our our Slack. So I'm going to go over to Slack. So that's uh, Comp 1070. It's just been a while since so we put in something in there. So we're going to go up to General, and inside General, I'm going to put in UE doc, right? So take a look at that link. And UE doc, what it is, is it gives us the definition for documentation of our code, right? Let's take a look at that. So here's an example of classes, constructors. And this example, what we can do is with UE doc, we can actually start defining our own API, right? Our own documentation. Later on, I can use a generator to generate all of my own code on a website using UE doc, right? Just putting it out there for you. So we're starting to use this syntax, syntax for documentation or internal documentation best practices. Okay. I haven't brought up the, the speed right now because I didn't want to overload you guys, right? But this is what I typically would do. Same thing with any other methods, right? So notice that I do all this and then call the main function, right? So call the main function. All the Happiness happens in this main function. This is where everything's going to live. So I have my start to initialize, right? I have my update, and I did this, right? But the right thing to do is to I'm just going to use I'm just use that that style, the documentation style, right? Where I return void, right? Return void. This is where I do that. This means this is what it returns in TypeScript, right? And I'll take these comments, put it in here, right? Because this is where it should live, right? Get rid of this. And I want to put in some decorators. I'm going to say at method, right, update, right, at returns void, right? I don't have any parameter. They're just comments, right? There's nothing that's going to, it's not going to affect my code in any way, right? In fact, when it transpiles, notice in my, Jap, my JS version, right? It's still there, right? Although it's cut back. Notice also I lose my colon void, and I lose my um, my canvas and stage typing. I don't have any of that anymore, right? Because normal JS doesn't care about this stuff. It's just for us, for for good tooling. That's what we're using it for. All right, cool. And you know, here's our main function. I'll do the same thing, right? So I'll say you know four slash four slash. I'll say uh, this method you know, um, is where all the fun happens, right? Right, and then we enter, we uh, add child objects to the stage here. Let's just say, okay? And again, we can do the same thing. We'll say something like at, oops, at method which we're going to call main, and then at returns void. We don't return anything here either. So we're going to say return void. Now, here's one thing we missed, right? Notice that this is an event, this ticker event, right? So this, right, semicolon, uh, you know, call the update, update method every frame. So this does. Okay, but because I'm calling the update method, I'm actually getting something called an event happening in here, right? I'm getting an event object automatically, and it's of type, of course, create JS event dot event. Remember, this is just type hinting, right? So this won't even show up in in um, in JavaScript. Now, I'm challenging you guys a little bit because you're seeing something a little new, right? You haven't seen this stuff before. But I'm organizing my code a little differently as well. Okay, It's like I'm writing my own application programming interface, right? That's what I'm kind of doing here, right? Same kind of style. 
All right, cool. App started. Yay. We haven't done anything, though. Let's test it out. Let's really do something. And whenever we do something in, in uh, CreateJS, I want to add something, some text, right? And remember that I want to make, here's what I want to do. Here's the effect that I want. I want to add a label in the middle of my screen, right? It's going to say, hello world. Come on, we got to do hello world with, with uh, CreateJS, right? It's going to say, hello world. And then I want it to spin around, spin around the screen, right? Five, five degrees every frame, right? So I want to be very specific about what I want, right? How do I do this? Well, one, if I'm going to access, if I'm going to do any spinning, it's going to happen in my update, right? My update is where this, the stage changes, right? When I redraw. So if I want to change something regularly, I'm going to put it inside the update method. I'm just going to put that in there, this one. So this is where I want my spinning to happen. I want to spin, this is, what I, this is my pseudocode. I want to spin my, spin a hello world, a hello world, ob, uh, world text object around here. That's what I want to do, right? That's my kind of to do, if you will, right? I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to say to do, right? This is my, I want to spin this around, okay? And in order for me to do that here in my function, I have to declare my label, right? That's what it's going to be, uh, my hello label, let's say, or whatever, hello text. It's got to be somewhere up here, yeah? Inside the uh, main, the global space here, inside the scope, right? So inside my, my function scope. So here, this is these are all my um, uh, you know, function level variables. That's what these are, right? So I'm going to sit there and go let. Um, we'll call this a low label, right? I want to I want to declare it like a var, right? But I want to declare it as a create js dot text object. Right? That's what it is. Now, what is create js text? Well, let's go to the API documentation. If you look and see what it is, and if I go back to my API, right? If I look at the text object on the left, you can see what it is, the text class, right? And what the text class does, right, it does, it looks like this. This is the kind of format that I want to use. So it tells you how to, it actually gives you little code snippets here, right? So I'm going to say text is equal to new create.js text, and I can put a hello world, and then I want to choose the font and the size and the color, right? And then I can specify the location and anything else I want. Okay, cool. Let's try this out. So I want to do this, but I want to declare it as a new object in main, right? So in main, I want to declare the new object. I want to say, well, my hello label, right, is equal to a new, I want to use the new keyword, createjs.text object. And what can I do? What is it listening for? Here it is. String, my font, and my color. Those are the three things it does. That's what I want. And it returns. Notice what it returns. It returns a create.js text object. That's what it returns. Okay, let's try this out. So we're going to say hello, hello world, right? My font, I'm going to make this 40 pixels, consolas, right? And my color, which is going to be, we're, we're going to make it black. So pound, right? Zero, 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 zero. Hexadecimal color, right? Is this enough? If I, is this going to appear on my stage right now? What do you think? Have I done that? Have I actually added it to my stage in any way? What do you think? Anybody? Huh? Alex? No, no. I just made it. This is just declaring the object. I'm creating a new object. Creating a new object is not added anywhere. It just creates it, right? I want to add it to my stage. And the way to do that is stage dot add child. And then the name of the object I want to add, which is a low label. This doesn't exactly do what I want it to do yet, because if I go back to my stage, it looks like this. Right? Now notice that I'm typed hello world. I made it 40 pixels, right? Consolas. That's the type. And it's outside of my screen. Question. Does my hello world object exist outside of my screen? outside of this canvas that we can see. 
You're saying no? Anyone else have another opinion? Yes, it does. But it's not being drawn. So think about my this thing that I'm looking at, this stage, is just the viewport. This is the only thing I can see of my big world that's outside of it. I can hold other objects outside of this viewport, outside of my stage, and they won't be rendered or drawn. They won't be drawn to my canvas. They'll be there, but you can't see them. Think about my camera. The only thing I can see, if, if, this, if this was a camera into my world, the only thing I can see is what, I, what's, what I've defined as my canvas. So this is too big, this font, right? This font is way too big. Hello world is too big for a 250 by 250 little block, right? So I can make it smaller by changing this to something like 20. Right, there it is. There's hello world, 20 point, right? Hey, question. How come it went to the top left? Anyone have an idea? I mean, what was that? Well, top left, top left to bottom right is where it starts. This is zero, zero, right? And because I haven't specified a location for the object, the default is zero, zero, right? That's my X and Y coordinates. Every object, including this text object, has coordinates, X and Y, attached to them. Okay, cool. So that means that I can do something like this. I can say, well, hello label dot X, right? is equal to, remember we made our screen 250? The middle of the screen is 125 pixels, right? 125, right? And uh, my hello label dot y is equal to 125. Hmm. Will this be in the exact center of the screen? What do you think, before we look at it? How about this table over here? Do you think this is going to be in, my, in the exact center of my screen? 125 by 125. Is my hello label going to be centered in my screen? Why are you saying no? Let, let, let me finish. We'll go on. Very good. Right? Remember going back to this? We know that if I printed hello label, right? So here's my stage. And if I did hello label here, and we'll just do it at the same size. So we'll say that we, we chose 20 point, And we also chose consolas. So let's just use the exact same font. So you kind of get an idea of, oops, that's the wrong one. Let's just use regular. I meant this one. Uh, consolas. This is consolas, right? So we're going to say, here's my hello world. Here it is. But if I put my hello world, now here's my hello world, right? And if notice the location, width and height, and here's my, my x and y. If I put my x and y at 125 and 125, you'll get something that looks like this. That's the center. And it's the center of this object because the anchor, remember we talked about the anchor? The anchor for my bu my my button was was here, right? That's the default, right? But we want to move the anchor to the middle if we want it to to uh, to go here, because otherwise the the anchor right now, if I was going to draw the anchor, is still up here. This is the anchor of my object, right? That means that's where it's drawn. It's drawn. It starts drawing from here, goes to the right and down to draw this object. It's actually drawing the text pixel by pixel. Right? That's what it's doing. It's not, it's not an object. It's not, it's not text. It's pixels. I talked about this before, right? So that's what this is doing. So if I want this to happen, and if I want to see what the effect of this is going to be by going to the browser, I'm going to see this, right? Like we said, if I want this centered here, then what I want to do, right, is move my center. And the way to do that is a low label dot regex, registration values for x, is going to be, right, what is it going to be? I have to measure exactly the location of my of my object, right? I don't know how big Hello World is in pixels. Do you? Right? So I can do something like this. I can say, well, it's equal to my Hello Label dot get measured, oh, get measured width. That's actually a method, right? Get measured width. And then I want to multiply that by 0 0.5. And I want to talk about this. I'm going to type it out, and then you tell me what it does. Dot reg y is equal to hello label dot get measured height. And then multiply that by 0 0.5. Why am I doing 0 0.5 calculations? And by the way, I want to do this, this stuff 
I want to do this here, like this. This is the order that I want. All right. No, this is get. This is the measuring. I'm measuring. Yeah. Right. I'm dividing by two. So I'm measuring the width. So if I go back to this, what I'm really doing is, here's my my width of hello world, right? And I want to measure it. And I'm saying here's hello world, right? Notice the width is 118 pixels. That's what it's giving me, right? Approximately in in my fireworks application, right? So 118 pixels is somewhere around here, in the middle, right? And then it's going to say my my height is 32 pixels, right? Approximately, for it to be proportional. So that means what it's going to do is going to draw. If I draw my screen, it's going to draw my center point approximately right there, right? And this center point is where this whole object is going to be drawn from. So the center point is not going to be the top left corner. It's not going to start drawing from here. It's going to start drawing from here in all directions, like this, my anchor. Okay. So if that makes sense, that means that if I go back, if I save this thing and go back to my to my web page, it should be like this. Now, one thing to make this even better, more accurate, is what they've done on the website, which is specify a text baseline. And if you want to know what this is, text baseline, you know, we scroll down. Right, so here's my text, my text class, and my inside there we have our methods and properties. Here's my properties. By the way, you have the index. This is really cool what they've done. And text baseline, if I want to find out what that is, so in numbers I have mes uh, get measured height, get measured width, right? And if there was such a thing as text baseline, it'd be measured here, right? What about if it's a method? Is it a method? I don't see that. So where is it getting that text measured, uh, you know, text baseline? Here it is. Text align, text baseline, the text object. These are all things that I can do. Line height and line width. I can specify these objects, right? Let's look at text baseline. Text baseline says the vertical alignment point in the font. Any of top, hanging, middle, alphabetic, ideographic, and bottom. For detailed information, view the whatwig.spec. Default is top, right? So whatwig.spec. And of course, I don't find the information, right, for text baseline. But what it really is doing, right, if I use text baseline, is making it alphabetic because that's what it is. I'm not using something else. So if I, I can always do that. I can say something like this. Before I type all this stuff and before I get my get measure width, I could do something like hello label dot text baseline, right, is equal to alphabetic. That's one of the values, right? That's right from the documentation. For those people who don't remember, right, the text baseline stuff, right, I'm looking at my text baseline. If I look at properties and inside my index, if I looked at text baseline, all right, it's not showing. It's way down here under events, my constructor. Rip. Uh, it's not it's not linking nicely anymore. It doesn't like me anymore. It is not going there. Let's go back a couple of steps. That's probably what it is. No, nope. more step forward. Text baseline. There it is. So again, what it says is these are the these are the values. Top, hanging, middle, alphabetic, ideographic, and bottom. Top is the default. Okay, cool. Text align, you can do start, end, left, right, and center. Those are the options if you want to. The text string, the text that, you, that I want to display, right, and a bunch of other stuff. All right, cool. Now that I've done that, let's go back and see what I get in my, on my page. There we go. So that seems to be the exact center now of my screen. Okay, cool. So I've got one part. One part is I get the exact center. Hey, can I highlight this thing? No, because it's not really text. It's text that's been converted to pixels. Okay, that's what's happening here. Anything you see inside there, inside that object, is text that's being converted to pixels. Okay, cool. Now that I got this, I want to spin it around, right? And I want to do that from its center. Let's go and, and see what I want to do here. So what I really want is every frame, so if I was actually going to access the text object, here's my hello world, right? I want to start spinning this around, and I want to spin it from the middle, right? 
So what I want to do here is I want to rotate this thing, right, one way or the other. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I can't do it here, okay, because here this main function only triggers one time, right? It only ever triggers one time, my main function. When it's called, right? I only call it once from my start method. Look, so my start method is here. It triggers main once, once and only once when my page is my drawn for the first time, right? If I want something to be drawn multiple times, I got to do it inside my update. And that's why I put my to do in here. So what I want to do is I want to replace this to do. And I want to put the following. I want to say hello label dot rotation, right? Plus equals to five. All right, you're going to say, well, what the heck? What does that mean? I want to rotate my hello label by five pixels every frame. Every frame, it's going to rotate. It's going to increase the rotation by five. OK, let's see what that does. Does it go out of control? Does it rotate? What does it do? Let's try this out. So I'm going to go back. And if I go back to my web page, and I got a rotating and a lazy arc too. It's kind of a weird lazy arc. Ooh, this is because of the text baseline that I put in. Let's see what it's like without the text baseline, right? So if I go back to this, and if I go down to text baseline, and if I comment it out, and I go back, you can see now it's right in the middle. And I think that's a little better without the text baseline. Yeah. If I want to rotate it the other way, I'm going to get rid of this. If I want to rotate it the other way, notice that I had five pixels. That's what I'm rotating every frame up here in my update, right? I can just minus equal, right? So subtract from it. Now it rotates the other way. OK? If I want to make this move up and down, right? So I want it to rotate negative 5 every frame, right? So counterclockwise, 5 degrees every frame. That's what this does. So rotate counterclockwise every frame, right? That's what I'm doing here. I want to make it move around. I can do that too. I can say, okay, I want you to, you know what, hello label? I want you to, the X coordinate, every frame will be plus, it's going to move to the right, 5 pixels. And you know what, every frame... I'm going to move uh, to, I want to move up, right? Now, when I move up, I need to subtract, right? Because positive Y is down, right? I want to move up uh, five pixels every frame, right? So this is going to give you a, an effect as well. I'm waiting a long time. Is it going to still be in, in my, on my canvas when I get back? No. Why? It keeps moving off the screen forever. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I refresh, whoa, try that again. Whoa, it's still in the game. It's still inside this in the app. It's still running, right? It's just off screen right now, OK? If I want to slow it down, I can make it move slower, right, by changing these values. Play with it a little bit. You can see that it's going to move way slower, right? It's going to move fly away. And if I want to make it even slower, what if I use like smaller numbers? Is there something less than a pixel? How does it figure that out? What if I use like 0.1? Can I do that? That's like messed up, right? If I can do this. How does it figure that out, right? Because it adds up. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0. Oh, here's a pixel move, right? Until it gets to the point where it wants to be. There's other things you can do to make it move in a spiral using cosine and cosine, right? Some kind of mathematical function where the x and y coordinate is in a spiral, right? Like cos theta, right? I'm going to multiply my number by math.cos, right? Let's try that. So I want to say on my x coordinate, I want to say is equal to, um, you know, whatever my degrees are. So let's say my... <clears throat> I want to, if I want to talk about, you know, my math function, math, right? So math is the function dot, you know, cosine, right? And I can put in my cosine, so this is my number. The x in radians is what I'm going to move, right? 
So let's use, I don't know, some kind of value, uh, like uh, you know, degrees. I'm saying I can do whatever I want in here. Math, uh, cos, I don't know, uh, uh, five, and radians. That's pretty crazy, right? Right? Uh, plus equals to plus, I don't know, some other value, like plus one or something like that. And let's do the same thing for y, right? We'll do it instead of negative y, we'll do a math dot sign, right? Math dot sign, and you can see that the number is going to be, uh, I don't know, again, we'll say five, right? Plus, you know, one, some weird number. And if I was to save this and go back, you can see that it's going to do some weird thing up here, right? It's going to focus up here on the top left. Why is that? Because math. Uh, cosine of 5, what is that? It's like some small number. What if I did something really weird, like cosine of, you know, um, 100, right? Some weird thing like that. See what that does. Still nothing really doesn't do anything. But you could use cosine and sine to calculate stuff too. I'm just, you know, messing up, trying to think of some wild values in here. How do I do, uh, how do I do uh, radians? Is there a way of changing from uh, angles to, you know, or uh, degrees to radians? Pi. Yeah, you could do that. Pi divided by 180 or something like that, right? So if I wanted to do radians, because there a math dot rad, you know, random, right? Dag, no. So I want to go, if I want to translate to from uh, degrees to radians, right? Let's try that out. So we'll say, you know, look at the formula for that. So. Um, convert from degrees to radians. I'll be okay. To radians formula. Right, so it's degrees. No, formula, degrees to radians. I think it's pi divided by 180, but degrees to radians. Yeah, degrees times pi divided by 180. I thought so. Right. So, so I'll say something like let radians is equal to um, whatever my angle is. We don't have that yet. Uh, times uh, math dot pi. Right. Math dot. The reason why it's not giving me code anything because it doesn't know what angles is. Let's try that. Put that. So let angle equal to uh, 5, right? And if I go math dot, math function dot space. Um, it's really weird. It's not giving me code anything here. Why, 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 why? No, it just, it's just it's because I have an error in my code. That's what it is. Like if I go math dot random, right, that'll work, right? But that's not what I want. It's math dot, and then it's not give, just giving not giving me code hinting for that. Oops, I don't want spotlight search. I don't know the I don't, I don't know the math functions offhand. So one thing sometimes what happens is uh, because I'm using TypeScript and and app .js, what happens is it gets lost, and I just have to just double click this again and go in and fix this. So, uh, I think it's math.py. Let's just make sure what the JavaScript function is for, for math. So JavaScript uh, math functions. I just can't remember. Pi. I knew there was that. Pi. Okay. And then divided by 180. I don't like to divide, but that's the angle. Right. And then I can pass in the radians right in there. Right, so that's what's going to be the x coordinate, right? And then we'll multiply that by, I don't know, multiply that by 10, right? Plus 1. Every frame. And let's see what happens. Nothing, right? It's kind of doing a lazy arc, actually. Anyways, but the idea is. I can change the x and y coordinates the way I like. It's when I want them to go in a loop, right? Any questions around 
how I can modify the rotation of an object or the X and Y of an object and where it starts off with reg X and reg Y. Reg X and reg Y is the anchor points. It's the X coordinate of the top, the horizontal anchor point and reg Y is the vertical anchor point up and down. That's what it's doing here. Okay, horizontal and vertical. Okay, cool. So I can do this, but this is really long, right? Look how big this is. This is huge for a label. What if I want more than one label? This would be terrible if I had to do more than one label like this, right? Wouldn't it be? Imagine if I had to do this for every single label the same. There's a lot of code duplication here too. Look, I have to say reg X and reg Y if I want everything uh, centered. Sometimes I don't want things to be centered. I got to do things differently. My God. This, when I see code duplication, you know what it means? I need a method or I need a class, one of the two. And how do I do this with TypeScript? TypeScript is beautiful with classes, right? I want to create new objects, a new folder. Remember, we did this before one time. Let's do a new folder under scripts. And I want to call it the objects folder. Cool. Here's my objects folder. In my objects folder, I want to define a new file. I'm going to call this file label.ts. In my label, I want to define a module. Now, we've done this before one time, but this is a refresher for you guys, right? I want to say the following, module objects. Inside my module, I want to declare a new class that I'm going to export, right? I'm going to export the class. That is the name label, the label class. In my class, I'm going to have a constructor, right? And my constructor is going to do something. It's going to initialize stuff, right? This is familiar to you, this, this syntax? We've already done this before. But I want my label not just to be a label, but I want it to be a super powerful label. I want my label to be to extend, right, create JS dot text. Whoa, what the heck is this? That means that my label is going to have an is a relationship with the text object. My text class, which is the uh, class that comes from CreateJS, right? That's the text class that is the all the text objects, right? Guess what? Label now is a text object, right? It is a it's a new text object, but I'm extending it. I'm adding things to it, okay? So in my constructor, I need to call the super constructor where I pass in the text, the font, and the string, right? But if I need to pass these in, I'm going to pass them in from my constructor first. So I'm going to listen for a couple things here. I want the, you know, the text, right? The text string, which is a string. I also want um, not just the text string, but I also want the uh, font font size. I want to be really, really you know, useful. Font size, which is a number. Uh, actually, I'll make that a string too. And I'll make the font type, right, which is a string. By the way, let's just make some put some space here. So I'm just going to break lines so you guys can see it. Not because I need to. I'm just doing it for you, right? So font text string, font size, font type. And I'm also going to do the font color font color, which is a string. I also want the x and y position, x, which is a number, right? Take a look, all the things I can ask for, right? The y, which is a number. And you know what? Is centered. Hold on. Is centered, which is Boolean. Yes? Could this font size be an integer? No. Okay. I could make it an integer, but no. Let's leave it as a string. It's going to be easier for us. Yes, you're right, if you think about what it is. But remember, everything when we do when we when we add that text item in there, we want to add it in as a as a, a string anyway. Okay, so why did I get all this information? Because this is my new label constructor, right? I want the label constructor to take in all these values to make it more easy for me and less typing every time I make a new label, right? Whoa, what does this mean? Well, first of all, in my super constructor, this is incomplete. I want to pass in text string, right? I want to also pass in and this is neat, neat, neat. Look at it. It's, it's listening for font, right? But font, in my case, is the font size plus the type. So I'm going to pass that in. Font size plus a space plus the font type. 
right? That's what's, that's what's ca being carried forward, right? Font size plus space plus font type. That's the second parameter, right? And then I'm passing in the font color. There it is. Make sense? So I'm getting all this stuff, but I'm only passing in. This part is the font size and type. Remember? Because if I look at my super constructor, that's what it's listening for. String, font, and color. That's all it cares for. I'm just breaking it out into font size and font type so I can specify for my label whatever I want. Right? Now, if you really want to be a stickler like Alex, Alex says, hey, what if I wanted to make it, instead of putting a string, I can make it a number. Could I make it a number here? Sure, I could because I'm, I'm actually adding it to a string, so then it converts to a number anyway. Uh, converts to a string from a number. So if I wanted to, you can make it a number if you want for yours. All right, that's the first part. The other thing is this. Notice that my text strings here are objects, right? I want to have access to them. Yes? And just kind of, I, I know we The super constructor is the constructor that comes from the super class object. The super class object in this case is the text object here, right? Uh -huh. Remember that whenever whenever I create a new text object in CreateJS, I did it already, right? If I go back to uh, uh, app.ts, right, you can see that I did that right here. This is the super constructor right here for text, right? I did all this. I sent this in. This is constructor notation. Whenever I create a new object, I have to use constructor notation, right? So the constructor, one of the constructors for the text object is this one. There's, by the way, it's it's uh, it's overloaded, right? So notice if I if I hover over, it has these question marks. Question mark mean optional. I can decide to put them in or not, whatever I want. Okay. So going back to the label that I'm making, I'm specifying the text string, the font size, and I'm passing all this because the constructor for the text object itself needs the text, the font size, and the font type and the font color. I can specify them in different ways, but I want to send this information as soon as I create my, my label. That's what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Now that I've got that, I also want to specify this, private text string, right? Private font size, private font type. When I do this, I'm actually saving some steps. If I want to make these accessible outside of my, uh, or inside of my class, Somehow, all right? X and Y are local variables, and is centered is something that I also definitely want to make private, right? Now, why am I taking X and Y values? Because I want to set the X and Y right away in my constructor. As soon as I call my, my label, bam, I know exactly where it's going to go, and if it's centered or not, OK? Now, private, what does this do? This is a shortcut. This replaces the need for me to put in any kind of properties. So I don't have to do something like this. Private text string string. Okay, cool. Private, or sorry, and then when I take text string, so this dot self uh, text string is equal to text string. I don't have to do that. Because remember, we have to assign the values if I want them inside of my, my application. I don't have to do that anymore. This does it in one step. It's a shortcut. And to show you this, if I transpile, and if I show you what label, what it generates, it generates this. Here's what it translates when I when I kind of transpile. Look at this stuff. This dot text string is equal to text string. This dot font size is equal to font size. This dot font color is equal to font color. It does all this work for me already. Now I don't want to do that for oops. I don't want to do that for um, for app dot for my um, uh, sorry for my x and y because guess what? Because my label uh, my custom object which is called label is a text object. It already has x and y coordinates. Right? So therefore, inside, underneath my super constructor, I want to do this. I want to say something like this. I want to say this.x is equal to x, the x that's coming into my constructor object. Right? And then this.y is equal to y to set the value of my x and y coordinates inside of my constructor right here. Now, here's something interesting. I don't want to do this because this sets the location, right? Set the location of the label, right? I don't want to do that until I have I know if it's centered or not. What I'm going to get is a Boolean, true or false, centered or not, right? Well, guess what? If this dot is centered, right? 
right, which I'm going to get from this, right? If that's true, then I want to say something like this. I want to say this dot get measured. Uh, sorry, this dot regex regex is equal to this dot get measured width, just like we've done before, times 0 0.5. And this dot reg y, and I'm going to talk about this, is this dot get measured height dot 0 0.5, or times 0 0.5, right? So what is this doing? This is saying something like this. Check if label should be centered. That's what this does. Right? And set the anchor point to the middle. Right? So it's doing to the middle of the object. Make sense? Now I'm doing it here, right? Other documentation. What should I do? Oh, I'm using a class. Let's use my documentation best practices for the class. I'm going to say star, uh, forward slash star star, bang, right? It does that automatically for me. You can do document, uh, you can grab a extension for VS Code to do this for you called document this, I believe. If I look at here, if I go to document this, right? Document this is what you want to grab, which does this stuff for me automatically if you get an extension for VS Code. All right, now I want to say that um, the label class uh, represents a text object, HS text object, create JS a text object with options already predefined. So it is, right? And also my constructor, this is my constructor, right? So I can do the same thing for my constructor, bam. Take a look at my constructor, it gets all the parameters, right? Member of label, right? And it says, creates an instance of label. This all happens automatically, by the way. I didn't do any of this. This is using document this, right? Remember I told you I'm making my own API, right? I'm almost making my own documentation for all this stuff. Okay, cool. I've got my label class. And if you followed along, you've got you did what I did. Now, before I add my label class, and I'll put it up on GitHub so you have a copy of what I've just done in a second. Before I get my label class uh, going, notice this is just documentation. This is says at param basically says it takes these parameters: a string that's a text string, a string that's a font size, a string that's a font type. These are all the parameters that I need for my label now, right? And I document this here that this constructor right, creates an instance of the label with all of these options. Okay, why am I doing this? Now you're gonna love this if you like it. First of all, what are the rules about, uh, about adding modules to my files? Rule number one, create the module, which I just did. Rule number two, add it to the index.html file. Right, so that's number two. So if I go to my index.html file, here it is, right? And I wanna add this as a module, guess what? It's gonna happen before app.js, right? And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of space in. I'm going to say something like this. Script, right, source is equal to dot slash scripts dot slash objects slash, right, label dot JS. Because it can't do TS. It's got to be type, it's got to be transpile, right? So this is the second part. Add it to the, I'm adding this to my, scripts inside my, my index.html. If I don't add it, then it's not part of my, my, uh, my application. I can define as many objects as I want, JavaScript. Unless they attach them to my index.html somehow, they don't count. They're just part of my application somewhere, right? Cool, so that's part two. So I, first I make a module. Two, I add the, the, the script I just made, the custom script. I, I make a reference to it in my document. Three, I need to make some kind of object with with this object, this thing that I've created. So here's my object in my app.ts now. I want to replace this, right, with my new object, my label object. So how do I start? I want to convert this to my new object. Well, it is a text object, but first I start off with the top. 
my variable hello label is no longer create.js.txt. In fact, what it actually is is the type of objects oh, dot label, right? That's the type. I've made a new type, right? Objects.label. That's what the hello label is, right? Cool. What else? Let's scroll down. This is OK. I can do all this stuff still, right? And it's not doing much. I'm going to put this actually in the middle, OK? I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of all this. And I'm not going to play around. I'm just going to get the rotation to rotate every five, uh, five degrees. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. That was just to play around to tell you I can do, I can move it around the screen. But this is wrong. I get an error here. Look, I'm getting an error that says, well, it's not really, hello label is not a text object anymore. It's more than a text object. It's a objects.label. Let's do that. So objects dot label. Right? But now it's giving me another error. It's saying, whoa. I'm not getting the things I want. I want a text string and I don't know. Look what it says here. It says supply parameters do not match any signature of call target because I've created, I've broken out my stuff in different steps, right? Hello world is correct, but 20 pixel console is not. I need two objects there. I need 20 pixel, comma, console is. I've broken it out. So I've done this part, which is the, uh, the name or the text object, text string. This part, which is the text, the font size. This part, which is the font type. And this part, which is the font color. What else do I need? Well, I also need my X and Y coordinates, 125 by 125. And I also need, is it centered? And yeah, I want it to be centered. Now I have everything I need. Let me just make that so it's, you can see it all. So if I've done this, if I centered it, guess what? I don't need this, 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 or this. I've already, I've already done all this inside my constructor. Does that make sense? I'm already doing that in my class. I don't have to do that here, right? Will this do what I'm asking it to do? That's the other question. So I go back and we have everything. So how did this work? How did that all connect and everything else? Like, how is this all working? This is part of your project, right? I've already done part of what you need to do, right? If you think about it. I've created a label object. I never asked you to do this, but I've created a label object, right? I put it inside a separate folder, right? Called objects. And my label object, I've defined as, you know, with a couple things. I've, I've got a constructor, it's a class. It takes all these things that I've asked it to take in. It sends some of them that's required to be sent to the super constructor, so it makes up a new object, right? And then I check to see if it's centered, and if it is, change the registration values, regex and reg y. Otherwise, I don't. For example, if I don't, sometimes I don't want my, my label to be centered. I want it to be the top left corner because I want to be able to you know, write it as a regular text, uh, text object. I can do that now, right? I don't have to always have everything centered, right? And then I set my x and y coordinates right from here, so I don't have to do it later, right? I do everything at once. OK, cool. This is one constructor. I can write many constructors. I can write as many constructors as I want. And I can actually change this by adding question marks in here. I can add the ability for me to add optionals, right? So sometimes I'll need this, and sometimes I won't. For now, we've got a label. But now that I have the pattern, right? I have a pattern for my label. That's what this, this, this class is. Class is a pattern, right? This hello label is a pattern. What if I want to say my goodbye label? I want to do that too. Here's my goodbye label. Right? There it is. Goodbye label, which is also of type objects.label. Right? That's what it is. Right? My goodbye label, objects.label, right? I want to show that down here too somehow. Right? Well, let's do that. So I'm going to say, well, my goodbye label, right? Here's my goodbye label is equal to a new objects.label. And then I'm going to say goodbye. So something totally different, right? Goodbye. And then I need a font size, right? Which I'm going to make it, let's make it something else instead of 20. Let's make it so it's uh, bigger, like 24, right? And by the way, 24 pixels is what I got to add in there, right? Notice that over here I had 20 pixels. If I'm going to really be specific, you know, as an example, I could change this to something else. So font size is one thing. I'll, I won't use consolas. I'll use something else, like maybe, you know, uh, some other kind of font. 
what other fonts are available by default, right, uh, in, in CSS that I can specify? I can't specify Helvetica. How about Arial, right? There we go. That's a font that's, ever, that's always available, right? Arial, right? And what else? I can also make my font color. Let's make it red. Make red, it's RGB. So R, B, 0, 0, B, right? And then let's talk about my X and Y coordinates. I want to make this go below everything else. So I'll make goodbye after below hello. So well, remember, our total size of my, of my object is 125, sorry, 250 by 250. So I want to make it appear something like, you know, 125 in the middle and then down below that by, to approximately 200. So we'll say 125 is the x-coordinate, 200 is the y-coordinate, and yes, I want it to be, to be centered. Okay? That's different values, right? There's different values here. And now what I want to do is I want to stage.addchild goodbye label. I don't want to rotate it or anything, so I'm not going to put any, value, any, uh, uh, any part of it in the... In the uh, in the stage, right? Cool, what do I get? I get this, right? Here's something I wanna show you, which is interesting. What if I put the goodbye label on top of the hello label? What's gonna be on top, hello or goodbye? Which one's gonna be on top? How do I know? Daniel, what do you think? Take a guess. Is hello if the goodbye label is it going to be on top of or below hello label? Yes. You got it. You, it's perfect. It should be on top, right? The way they appear on the screen is an order. So this is like layer order, right? So all all objects added to the stage appear in layer order, right? The order that you tell them to be to, to appear, right? So here I'm adding, add a, uh, the uh, hello label, hello label to the stage. That's what's happening. Here I'm adding a goodbye label to a stage, right? Add a goodbye label to the stage. That's what it is, right? Let's put it on top of each other. I put this to 125. So they're, they're identical. They're right on top of each other now. And you can see the difference, right? See how goodbye is on top of hello? Right? And if I want to make it really apparent that it's different, I could rotate it the other way around, right? Just to give you an idea of how, how crazy this can be, how much control you have, right? So if I go down to update, I could do something the same thing. I could say, well, goodbye label, right? plus equals to five, rotation, sorry, dot rotation, right? That, rotation, plus equals to five. And if I do that, it's gonna look like this, right? Guys and girls, the great thing about this is you can define whatever you want, right, in here. Okay, we're running out of time. We've got like seven minutes, and I wanna show you a quick button right now remember a button is just a bitmap i need an image for the button because i hey create just doesn't have a button you make your own this is low level you know make your own graphics kind of uh, thing right i want to make my own i want to make my own button let's make one really quickly so here i want to go into uh into here into fireworks and i'll share the button with you online okay so i'll say new Object, let's make the button approximately, it's only 250 by 250, so I'm probably going to make it something like, you know, uh, let's say 30 pixels high or 40 pixels high by 50 pixels wide. So, you know, uh, 40 pixels high by 50 pixels wide, and you can see that the button is right here. That's not too big, right? So I want to make it wider, maybe 150 pixels, so modify canvas. I'll say my, um, my canvas size instead of 40 by 50, I meant it the other way around. I meant it to be like maybe 150. There we go. And this is my this is where I'm going to put my my button. So I'm going to put my button in here. I'm going to draw a box just really quickly. So I'm gonna, and I'm going to do this with. Uh, sorry, I'm going to do this with my my uh, objects here, right? And I'm going to just make this so that's zero zero. Zero zero. Sorry about that. Just recenter it so it looks exactly the same. 
There we go. Zero, zero. Uh, craziness. And then change the color. I don't like black. Let's make it blue like we did before, right? So I'm going to make it a dark blue color, something like this. And that's, that's it. And then let's make it some kind of uh, gradient color. So we'll start off at, wow, it's really slowing down. I'll start off at a light blue like this and go to a higher, you know, kind of a lighter blue, that kind of button. There we go. And I'll add in some text inside the button right here. And we'll call this the click me button. Click me. There we go. Click me button. And I'll center the button's text in here. Oh, it's my machine is really chugging right now. All right, and just change that uh, text to white so we can see it, so it's legible. There we go. So there's the button. Click me, and we'll make it so that it, it's bold already. Good. I want to save this button, so save as right, and I want to put it inside the exact location I need it. So I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to go to Comp 1073, and I'm going to go inside my Lesson 12, inside my uh, Assets Images folder, and call this button the Click me button, right? There we go. And so now you have the exact same button I have. I'm going to drag and drop this thing right from our um, our folders, right? Here's my, my click me button. I'm going to drag it onto Slack for you so you have it. Just that way you have what I have, right? So I'm going to kind of do one of these. And it says add my click me button there. And the answer is yes, I will. You can have it. There you go. There's you got you got the click me button. Yay, click me. So you can drag, drag it and drop it from Slack. So you have what I have. If you want to check it out, right? Cool, cool. Now that I have the click me button and it's inside my application, right, which is right in here under assets images, right? Here's my click me button, right? I can reference it, right? I can reference it here in my app. Now I'm not going to show you how to do everything. I'm going to follow up with this next next week, right? And I wish I had another day to spend with you guys, but I don't. So this is how it would look. If I wanted to put my click me button in place, I could define a new bitmap. This is just a bitmap right now. Okay? And let's define a new one. We'll say let's click me button is equal to of type of create JS. We haven't made the class yet, dot bitmap. We'll make a, bit, a, a bitmap or a button class later. But it's going to be very similar to label, right? There's my bitmap. Okay, cool. My click me button. All right, cool. What am I going to do here? I'm going to go down here and say add add a button, a, a click me button, click me button to the stage, right? How does it work? Well, it's going to be click me button is equal to a new create.js dot bitmap, right? And now what does it need? Well, it needs an image or URL string, some kind of uh, of of path string, that's what it needs, an image string, right? Where is this thing? It's asking me. Well, it's relative to my index, so it's going to be, or actually, it's relative to my app.ts, so it's going to be up one to uh, scripts, up another, right, to the root, down into assets, down into images. So it's going to be up one, up two, down into assets, down into images, and it's going to be click me button, right? Click me button. Dot ping. Cool. Cool, cool. Right? But you're going to see that this doesn't do anything. I need to add it to the stage. And the button is going to be drawn from the top left corner, which means I need to change the registration values. So that means I need to do something like this. You can see where I can need I need a button class, right? So I'm going to say click me button dot regex is equal to um, it's different. There's a different function here. Click me button dot get. Sorry, dot uh, get bounds. It's an image, right? Dot width times 0 0.5. It's a different function. That's all it is. And you know what? I want to do a click me button dot reg y is equal to the click me button dot get bounds. This is like get measured width, get measured height, right? Same thing. Times 0 0.5. Different function because it's images. Okay, cool. And then I want to say click me button dot um, my x will make that equal to 125. Click me button dot y will make that equal to 200, right? And then guess what we're going to do? Stage dot add child click me button, right? 
So now that adds the button, the, the look and feel of the button to the stage. If we did everything correctly, right? I know I went fast. But if we did everything correctly, then we should have a button that appears on the stage, right? Notice that it on top of the other ones, even though they kind of hit, you know, kind of go behind, right? Now this button doesn't work. I can't click on it. It's just a bitmap. It's just an image right now. If I want to make it clickable, I need to add event listener, right? Just like we normally do. So to make this clickable, I need to do this like this. So I'll say click me button dot on click. Then I'm going to call an anonymous function that does something like, you know, access the label. Let's change my uh, the, the text of both labels, right? So I'm going to say something like my hello label dot text. I want to rename this. Oh, this is going to be a problem. I can tell you right away. Instead of hello label, it's going to say um, hiya. Hiya, right? <laughs> right? And my goodbye label, oh, you're going to love this, right? Dot text is going to be see ya, right? Something different, right? Hiya and see ya. What happens here? How does this all work, right? When I, when I click on the button, it's going to change these things, right? So I go back to my, oops, my... Thing. And if I if everything worked and I click on the button, then it looks like something totally different. Now, why did it does it do this? Can you tell me why it does this? Yeah, I didn't change where the anchor the anchor is the same place that I that it was it was before. I never changed the anchor point. If I wanted to be accurate, when I change my text, this is close this down. I don't need I don't need fireworks anymore for today. If I want to be accurate, when I change my text, I need to measure it again and then redo the reg x and reg y values. Not going to do it here, uh -huh. but that's what I have to do. Guys, this is a great opening into CreateJS. We've done a simple button and label, and this is the beginning of what we need to do uh, for working with CreateJS. All right? Here's a challenge for you. Challenge, homework, right? Go home and make your own button class, right? and see if you can make it work, where I don't have to do all this work every single time I make my own button, because that's a pain. Imagine if I made every button, I had to have all that big chunk of code. That's a lot of code duplication, right? So go home and try this out and see what happens. If you can do it uh, and try it out, I'm going to ask you for it next day. Maybe, maybe I'll have a little lab that I, I get you to, to hand it in, your own button class, uh, by next week. OK? Actually, from now, I'm good. See you next week. OK, please, again, remember you've got your assignment four. Don't wait, because next week I'm going to check to see if you started. All right?